All right, this is Clint from the Doorway 2, hanging out with the guys in Gut Void. Uh, I hope it's a, a good evening for you. It's been a pretty quiet one for me. Uh, if you guys want to kind of introduce yourself, what you do in the band, uh, we'll kind of start that way. Sure. Me first or you first? I'll go first. Uh, my name is Daniel Bonafilio, and I play guitar. Uh, and I'm Brendan Dean, and I also play guitar and also am the vocalist. Cool. Um, so I kind of want to ask a question. I saw that you guys now have a bass player and drummer, but on your recordings, you didn't. So who did all the uh, the bass and the drums on the, on the uh, debut EP? Uh, so EP and the single we put out, uh, Forbidden City Meet the Crypt, Dan did the bass. Nice. As well as one of the guitars. And then we both kind of wrote the songs. Um, like kind of we, we write on Guitar Pro. And so we just used Superior Drummer for the drums there because at the time, you know, we didn't have a drummer or a bassist. Um, and so we just used that and like, you know, put the file in there and, and went from there. It's very common. I With my band, yeah. we do the same thing a lot of times. We'll, we'll lay down drum tracks. And then if the, the drummer, who's also one of the lead guitar players in my band, sometimes plays live drums, but most of the time he just does it through the whole superior drummer thing too. So Yeah, cool. it's, it, it's so easy now. Like, you know, if, if, for like demoing, like all of our like demos we've done and stuff as well yeah. for others, you know, things come up, it's all just superior drummer. Yeah. <laughs> no, very cool. Um, so you guys have not been around very long as a band, as a unit. Uh, basically about a year, right? Yeah, yeah like... We'll be here in 11 days soon. Like, you know, yeah. October 20, oh, sorry, the album's going to be out, or the EP will be out for a year. Yeah. So we and, in July, last year? Yeah, like, I'm trying to think. Like, we had kind of talked about it, like, summer of 2018, like, was the start of the idea um but then yeah i think it kind of became full force like around last like summer yeah 2019 and then we kind of got the full band together like kind of right before the pandemic lockdown started like late for february early really march is when we locked dennis in for drums and that was when we became the full band and then yeah everything shut down <laughs> yeah, just just the way right just the way yeah um, so i kind of want to ask a little bit about the ep uh because it's got some really interesting mixes to me and I kind of want to put my thought pattern to you and see if it kind of meets what you guys wanted to do in the long term. So they're not short tracks by any means, which is really awesome. Three tracks, like 25 minutes. That's a pretty sweet EP. Like, I'm just going to say like, you know, you're not giving us, you're not giving us four songs, 11 minutes or something like that. You know, that's, that, that's really good. But what I hear is a mix of a lot of, like old school death doom with a lot of industrial kind of elements. I wouldn't say it's an industrial band, but I'd almost say like if you mixed elements of like incantation and God flesh uh, together, like it kind of gives me that vibe where you, I know people call God flesh an industrial metal band, but they're not, they're really kind of just a doomy death metal band. that kind of uses industrial drum elements to make that kind of sound. And then like, there's kind of this sweet spot of, I, I don't know if, if if it's the right term for you guys, but there's like a grindcore kind of feel to it. Like, um, it kind of reminds me of like the bolt thrower and carcass kind of grind, though. Like, you know, the more mid tempo grind stuff. So I kind of wanted to get your opinion. Like, like at the, when you were cre creating this EP, like, were you trying to mix those like industrial and grind elements into the? Or was it just something that happened? Uh, you want to go down? Uh, sure. I <laughs> I, I can't hear the grindcore industrial, but it's cool that you hear it. That's really neat. For us, I'd say um, like death, old school uh, death metal, doom metal was the main influence. Yeah, like I think, if, I think the main influence we were kind of drawing on, we were like starting Gut Void and writing stuff, but even like still now, like a lot of, uh, you know, Time Ghoul, a lot of, uh, Demi-Lich, a lot of Cabillist, a lot of Crips, um, you know, Mortiferum, like a lot of that stuff was kind of a big influence on kind of like starting the band and also, yeah, like writing a specifically the EP. Um, but yeah, like kind of echoing down, like it's cool to hear that, like, you know, um, yeah. Like, it's it's also, just mostly the drums, like, like it, it's mostly the drums that I hear, like it's got a very kind of like old school, like god flesh bolt thrower kind of mid-tempo like pound to it that like works really well with that death kind of doom vibe that you guys have 
cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Like again, and you know what? And I bet the fact that we use superior and like, you know, when I was like mixing it, I like definitely put like, you know, some heavy reverb on the drums and everything. Like I think all of that probably helps to kind of give gotcha. that kind of uh that feel to it. Cool. Yeah. Um so I, I kind of wanted to ask about the the theme of the EP because it seems like there's a pretty strong story going on there, and I just kind of want to like uh, at the end of the day, is it a story or is it just a couple of like really interesting kind of themes and tracks going on? Um, yeah, like lyrically, it's I mean it's not like a story in in a sense of like a concept kind of thing, but it all. Like if you could take like an overarching concept, it kind of all falls in that same kind of, you know, like sci-fi horror fantasy yeah. kind of stuff. Like, you know, definitely, you know, HP Lovecraft, but also kind of like the things that HP Lovecraft influenced were, I would say, the more heavily influenced kind of stuff. Like things like um, you know, like video games that were influenced by HP Lovecraft, like uh, you know. Eternal Darkness or like, Here's My Magic 3, things like that, like kind of like that, or in that like, you know, sci-fi fantasy vein, um, kind of playing to that, like, you know, Baking Dripping from the Stars is like just a pure, like, I was like, oh, I want to write something kind of fun that's like, you know, you know, summoning these ancient gods and like, it kind of goes awry, um, you know, or in a trance by From Dawn, like it kind of, I didn't write the lyrics, but I had that title in mind. I'm like, how can I get there? And it's just like, oh, like someone who, has gotten these, you know, powers and like has seen these other worlds and it's like, why stay here? Why stay tethered to this if there's so much like beyond just this reality? Um, and then yeah, like pilgrimage to the Necropolis ruins is like kind of a pure, like I mentioned, like well, pure <laughs> like, magic three kind of influenced in that, like gotcha. um, just want something kind of yeah, like do me, but also like has some atmosphere and a, a bit of you know that geeky sci-fi horror element. Cool. Yeah, we love video games. Yeah, I could yeah. Tell. <laughs> No, you could definitely tell. Um, so yeah. that was the other thing I kind of want to talk about. So the guitars on this EP to me are super impressive because where sometimes like I love I, I love bands like Two Mold and Bloody Cantation that have those really interesting verbed out, freaked out guitars. Now you do it in a very different way. Like it's not oversaturated, but you can like uh, I hope this is a sign of respect. It's kind of Voivodish to me, okay? Like, when I hear that kind of element, like, you use verb in a really unique way. And, uh, like, Piggy always was a very interesting way. He never over-verbed the guitar, but you always knew it was his goddamn sound. Like, and when I listen to this EP, uh, I know the second that I start hearing you guys, like, play, because it's a very unique guitar tone. I kind of wanted to ask, like, what do you use, like, like what creates this kind of interesting tone for this EP? I guess it's a mix. Part of it is um, we use Fortin uh, plugins by Neural, and Brandon mixed uh, Amplitude, I believe, with it. Yeah, Amplitude for kind of the the Mesa cabinet kind of. So it's like uh, the tones combined. Yeah, and then like like you mentioned, like not a ton of reverb, but you know, there's still some there. Um, yeah, and just like kind of like making them kind of work together so they sound kind of like you know organic and nice uh, with that kind of two, I you know like the Ford and the Mesa like they both sound kind of distinct and different, but kind of having them work together, um, I hope that uh, yeah helped give it that kind of that feel and that sound. It, it, That's it, awesome it, to hear. It, it did. It gave that very organic kind of like old school kind of the. You're you're right. Like. I, I love that you use some Finnish death metal terms because like, that's kind of what the vibe it's, it's that syrupy kind of like murky, really cool yeah. doom death. Yeah. Kind. And and you definitely, you definitely pull that off. So very cool. Awesome. Um, yeah. Thanks. Uh, um, very, yeah. Very cool. So I kind of want to talk about everything happened pretty fast for you. Like within a year's time frame, uh, you signed a blood harvest, uh, you put an EP out, you got a full length record coming out. Um, I know you two have both played in other bands live and otherwise together. Uh, was 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 Gut Void always a, a, a plan or was it something that just like uh, I'm sick of these other assholes. Now I'm going to leave this band and start it like like how, how did it happen? Like part of it was no, <laughs> <laughs> no, just uh, we've always played like I think it's been like 16 years now. 
yeah. 2004 started playing together in a band called the Ditem. It's like an Opeth style. And ever since then, we've always written together. So this just, I guess it was naturally going to happen. Yeah. And yeah. Like we were expecting this too, which is crazy. Yeah. Like we were just like, yeah, you know, let's, let's kind of do a project like kind of like, you know, that old school death metal, like finished death metal sound. Um, Cause like all the bands we had mentioned that influenced us were like, yeah, they're great. We should like do something in this. It'd be a lot of fun. Um, then we just like put the EP out and, and yeah, here we are. We, it's, we didn't expect this at all. We actually, we didn't even expect to form an actual band out of this. We thought it would just be kind of like a, he and I, you know, yeah. maybe put out a few things here and there, you know, using Sphere Drummer. And then kind of once it picked up, we're like, hey, we should like, let's form a band again. Cause after, after a diadem kind of split up or went on hiatus, like, Dan and I had, you know, we still write a ton together, like, you know, all the, the stuff, the solo stuff that we've each put out, like, you know, we've each kind of been involved with in some form, um, you know, but we haven't played together live since, what, like 2010, maybe, maybe last, 2009. Um, yeah, probably, probably. Okay. yeah, so, so it was nice, like, we were like, hey, let's form something, let's like, you know, try to play live, try to bring that back. So we're very... Very happy, happy that you know this kind of happened without us expecting it. We're very fortunate, and it's it's really fantastic. And we can't wait, you know, to, once the pandemic kind of ends and everything gets back to some normalcy to to get up there and play some live shows with the, now the full band and everything. And cool. really looking forward to that. Awesome. Uh, so that's kind of what I was going to ask. Um, how is the live dynamic going to change? with the e from the ep to the full like you're you i know is it this year or next year when the uh, when the new full album is coming out uh we're planning next year okay um like we've we've basically written all of it um you know and now it's just kind of you know all of us as a band learning it all which we've been working on and then hopefully you know start really tackling it early next year you know all things considered so the yeah. was, how is it be different uh, from the record of you just two, you, you two doing it to a, a full band? Is it more dynamic? Is it, is it kind of like, we're going to just follow the, the record and do the record live? Like, like how do you want it to, to present itself? Um, I'm going to, Dan, if you want to answer that or I can, or. Yeah, I think, well, drum wise, it will change because Dennis will add his, his style to the music. So I think something will change there. Yeah. And then Justin as well, he'll have his own approach. And uh, guitar-wise, I guess it'll be pretty similar, but our tones, I think we've uh, established our own sound now compared to the EP. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it'll be, I think, like, yeah, similar. Like, we'll use it definitely as, uh, like, a template. Um, but, yeah, like, you know, especially with the drums kind of, like, Again, follow the same kind of feels, but you know, Dennis is a definite, you know, better drum writer than either of us, and and so he's going to do his own stuff. And um, it's been, I mean, the times that we have played it, like, sounded it sounded really great. Yeah, so it's, yeah. it's exciting to to kind of put a new spin on it, but still have that same feel, that like definitely that same sound. Like, you know, it's going to sound like us, just kind of I think a a better refined version of us because it's now like two extra people putting their creativity and, and you know making it even better so. is everybody writing in the uh, for the band now or is it still just the two of you basically writing and the other guys kind of just uh bringing their their you know their 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 elements into it uh, i guess it, right for the album it was just us two because um at the time we we put out the ep and then we kept writing more songs mm -hmm. we had a ton of material we didn't have uh, justin or dennis and we weren't sure what we were going to do. So we had an album written, but for any future songs, all four of us will have input. We're going to try to keep that, uh, I guess, dynamic. Everybody has their own ideas and then come yeah. together. Yeah, definitely. Like, you know, it's, we might come with maybe the, like the, the general ideas for the songs or like the feel of it or whatever, but we want to try to really make it collaborative because it's been. You know, like I said, everything happened really fast. And in the short time that the four of us have been together, it's like, it's just elevated kind of everything, at least for us. Like, it's it's fantastic having the two of them um, just like having their ideas and, 
you know, like jamming stuff and like hearing the slight differences they do and working on like, you know, with Justin, like him getting like a, a new bass tone and stuff, like working that in. It's just all of it's like, it's really fantastic kind of overall. So to keep that collaboration, that, that feel going forward, um, even on the, for the album, like the tracks that we did write, like, you know, although we are like, yeah, this is like basically it, like we've demoed it, but like if either two of them want to like, change up anything or have any ideas like we're you know of course all ears and very cool yeah so here's a question you probably get a million times but i'm gonna ask it anyway so i just don't care <laughs> um why gut void like what where where does that name fit into the overall vision of the band uh i mean interpretations <laughs> yeah yeah like We've, we've kind of talked about, like, Dan and I, like, you know, like, what, what is Gut Boy? Like, it kind of started, that name just kind of popped up to us, and we're like, damn, that, that's like a, just Gut Boy. Like, it's, there's something about it that sounds good. Like, it, um, it sounds like, you know, it'd be a good name for, like, kind of this project back when it, we didn't know what it quite was, when we were just kind of kicking it around. We're like, that'd be a great name for the band. Um, you know, we've said, like, like what, what is the Gut Boy? Um, and again, I think it's, a lot of interpretations and I, I think it just it to me at least it, it gives like a feel of what we're going for like that kind of you know sci-fi fantasy horror like a lot of atmosphere but also it's kind of gross like you know like I think of like the void of space but instead yeah. of the space it's guts it's yeah. like it doesn't really make sense but it's like it's, it has that feel to it it's kind of like it's gross but it's like you know that's at least to me um but again like you know I think it's open to cool yeah no absolutely uh it's it's a really interesting name so that's why i was kind of asking um cool. I, I didn't know if there was like maybe a, a sci-fi novel or movie or some like line it was in and i was gonna have to go hunt for it or something like that uh, but, uh, i i hope so i hope that like <laughs> there is something that uses that term we just didn't realize it. that's fantastic that's awesome um very cool so i kind of want to ask uh why blood harvest like they they seem like a rather interesting label like they do a lot of fringe music i, I think I'll, I'll use the best terms is um yeah they're they're definitely a metal label but they they branch out in a lot of different directions what made them the go-to label for you um, do you want to go dan or oh uh, yeah sure oh you said you're going Sorry. Oh, oh no! I said, do you want to go? I, like, I'm happy to. Or I feel like I answered the last one. Uh, um, I don't know. We were fans of, uh, or we are fans of Two Mold and Mortifier. And we noticed he put those out. Uh, I believe it was the demos. I can't remember exactly what he put out. But he has a lot of great bands on his label, and uh, the deal he approached us with was really good. So he's a great yeah. guy. Didn't say no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just all, everything's good. It's a great label. Yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah, kind of echoing Dan, like, really nice guy, really happy to work with him. Like, and other great, like, great bands that are on there now, like, you know, Bloods Ford oh. were awesome and Cryptic Shift were awesome. Like, it's, uh, you know, I, I feel like it's getting a good growing roster of like bands that are kind of like in the same vein as us. And it's, it's uh, I don't know, it, it's, it kind of works well. Like, I think it's, I think it's a good combination and good. And uh, he was really excited when he contacted us. So that that enthusiasm from him really, uh, I guess. Very cool. Yeah. 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 I, I, definitely, I, I definitely would say that, yeah, the, at its heart, the label is a death metal label. And then everything kind of goes from there. Like, um, you know, like, you know, Cryptic Shift for the, maybe one of the most awesome, bizarre bands going on right now. But, yeah. and, right. Yeah, but at its heart, it, it, it's a death metal band. So, no, I totally gr agree with you. Yeah. Cool. Um, yeah. So, any videos, any visual presentations coming uh, soon for you guys at all? Um, uh, you know, not, not just like a, a you know a, a lyric video or anything like that. Or are you going to make an actual like professional or a video for the EP at all? That's a good question. Um, I know Dan and I've been kind of kicking around the idea. We are we're in the middle of kind of securing like a a permanent jam space we've been kind of hopping around a couple through this um and i think i'd like to do you know maybe some playthrough videos 
nice. um, which, you know, I'm always a big fan of those. And I think, you know, that's something that, you know, we can kind of get going there. So at least there's something with it. Um, but I don't know, like we, we haven't really talked, discussed that, like uh, having a professional video, but like, I mean, who knows, you know, we'd love to have something like that or, or something going. Cool. Yeah. Anything, a any thoughts? I would definitely open to do a video, maybe a cool like animation sci-fi thing to go along with our theme. That would be neat. Yeah. Or yeah. even we could uh, set up maybe a show one day, play a few shows, like stream it. Yeah. It seems popular right now too. So yeah. Can try in the future. Yeah, especially if you know things kind of take a while to open up. It's definitely something that uh, we and we've kind of discussed that, like we'd love to do as well. You know, considering we we haven't played a live show, it'd be good to just at least you know kind of showcase the four of us being like, hey, like this is this is now Gut Boy. Like here's kind of you know what to expect once things open up and we can actually play some shows. You know, very cool. So here's a question I ask every one of the bands that I that I interview, and uh, I get really interesting reactions from all of them. So I kind of want to see what your opinions are going to be, since you are literally a brand new band to most people. Um, if you could have any band take one of your songs and make it their own, who <laughs> would you want it to be and why? Good question. <laughs> That's fantastic. Now, okay, does the band have to be current, or can it be like... It, no, can be a band, it can be a band from 50 years ago that doesn't exist anymore. I could really give a damn. Like, I want from each one of you, who would it be and why? Uh, hmm. I think Gore Guts would do something really interesting with their sound. Yeah. And we're, that's why we love them too. So I would love to see them do something with uh, one of our songs. Yeah, that would be incredible. Like, oh, be, Gore Guts. oh sorry. Yeah, it'd be, I don't know, really unique. So. Their riffs are crazy. <laughs> just how they would interpret it. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I mean, just to, to kind of jump on that before I respond, like, you know, Gorgats were a massive influence for us as well. Like, just absolutely incredible. That would be, that, that's a great answer. That's better than my answer. Like, that's <laughs> Um, If I did choose one, I mean, this is the first thing that came to my mind. And it's, it's maybe a little out of left field, but. I don't even know how it would work, but I would love to have in some way Rush do something <laughs> with one of our songs. Like I'm, I think that would be great. <laughs> yeah, they could do the, the instrumental would be great. I could hear like you know Getty's bass tone would be fantastic on that stuff. So, uh, so that's that, that's yeah. interesting. So 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 both more proggy kind of bands. That's pretty yeah. interesting. Yeah, that's that's pretty interesting. All right. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean. I mean, come on, Color Sand is probably like one of the yeah, sickest yeah. records. Yeah, like one of the sickest yeah. records of all time. I, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna disagree. Like, just to listen yeah. to Gore Guts, just normally, forget about like them, imp like trying to inspire on something. I, I'm, do I totally get it. And yeah. uh, I mean, if, if you like this kind of music at all, and you don't like Rush, you're a damn fool anyway. So, like, let's, let's just, exactly. like, let's be, let's be honest, okay? Exactly. It's probably got us all into this anyway to begin with. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I'm 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 older, so I'm 48. So I can tell you, like, uh, in, in my teen years, like the the prog way was my my friend's older brother is all playing me Rush records. So I could completely, I totally, no, I, I totally get it, man. Um, so on kind of a a different topic, uh, what's your thoughts on this more digital world we live in? Because I I love the fact that you actually have vinyl tapes and like you have other formats, like. I'm going to be kind of negative for a moment. You could be positive if you want to. Uh, I'm an old guy and I'm kind of get off my goddamn lawn with this digital age kind of stuff. Like I love my phone and I love like YouTube and Spotify and all that. But like holding a vinyl record or holding a cassette and being able to pull it out with like 10 panels, like yeah. that's how I grew up. Like going to a record store and having the record store guy be my buddy and be like, oh, hey, you like I Hate God? Well, here's six other bands that you might want to check out now because now I know you like that. That world doesn't really happen anymore it's kind of uh you go on forum boards and that's kind of the new record store guy and i i don't feel the same vibe i kind of want to get your interpretation do you miss that world of like being able to go in smell it feel it touch it versus the digital age yeah i lean towards more how you think um digital is good because it's convenient but other than that uh, i prefer physical media because I love sitting, if I get the album for the first time, I like 
to go over the liner notes and read everything. I'll have the actual artwork in front of me and sit there and listen. To that. It's like basically an experience. So. And I miss going to like HMV or something, searching through the stacks of CDs. And that's yeah. It. Cool. Yeah, I get. I mean, and I'm I'm the same. Like, I think Dan summed it up perfectly. It's digital is great because it's convenient. It's I can you know grab my phone, sit here with my you know Bluetooth headphones, and listen to a ton of stuff at the you know touch of a button. But there is something not only about holding the physical thing, you know, like that's great and owning it and being like, here's my collection. It's it's far nicer to show a collection than you know like, hey, look at my Spotify playlist, right? <laughs> my downloads. But yeah, like I I still love going into record stores now and like even if I'm like they're not gonna have anything I, I'm looking for, it's like good just to like you know bruise through the stacks and yeah, you know, that feeling. It's it's similar to like you know I can I can't read things digitally. I need to have the book because yeah, same, same thing. thing. There's something it, there's something palpable about it. You know, it's that smell, that tactile sensation, that experience of like you know having the dog-eared book like kind of like jammed in your pocket and you're pulling out and just reading, right? Like it's just it's just something about it. it's like a lot more i don't know it, it adds an aspect to it that you that you can't get with the digital like oh, you know, oops sorry oh sorry i was gonna say it's more of an immersive experience and if you're with a friend and uh, going out and just talking about music all day while you're hunting for albums yeah yeah like like what dan and i would do like we yeah. when we first became friends back in what 2004 like we when we realized, hey, we're all into like the same bands and stuff. We would go to HMV or Sunrise Records and and like just go through the stacks. Or we because we're both from Newmarket, which is like forty minutes north of Toronto. We'd you know take a trek down to Toronto to get to like the bigger uh, record stores and like yeah. and be like sweet like let's like oh I what's this band? I don't even hear I've never heard of them, but like their metal section is so much bigger than the one we have. Let's like get this and there's so many CDs that I. I had because of that, you know, just being like, this looks cool. Like, yeah, you know, like anorexia nervosa. Who are they? I don't know, but I like bought one of their albums. I'm just like, this is fucking great. Like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. Like, I would sometimes I would buy records just for the cover. I'd be like, all right, yeah. I have I have no idea what the hell this is, but this looks so cool. I'm gonna buy it. And you know what? If I don't want it, I can always take it back, and they're they're gonna buy it back from me, and I'll buy two more records. Like who? Like who cares? Yeah. Like that. That's the way. No, very cool. I I, I appreciate that. So yeah. on that kind of topic, uh, what bands made you who you are? Not influences to the band, but like what bands like brought you to this place? There's a ton. <laughs> yeah, you you can go first, man. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Um, uh, well, first comes to mind is Dream Theater. Dream Theater and Rush are the are the biggest. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Um, their music, I don't, they they encapsulate everything. I guess I would want in music. Like you have techni technicality, the songwriting skills. Uh, there's melody. There's a heaviness to them. Yeah. So they bring everything. I guess in one one shot. Um, I love stuff like Frank Zappa. I'm a huge Zappa head. Um, I guess those are the biggest Russian dream theater. Yeah. Yeah, and and I mean I'm, I'm gonna sound a bit like a uh, like just an echo chamber here, but yeah, like I mean for me the pinnacle of music is Rush. Um, like they, I mean I picked up the bass guitar because of Primus and Les Claypool, and I picked up the bass before I picked up the guitar. Um, but once I got into Rush, like my dad was like, I think if you like this band Primus, you're probably gonna like this band Rush. And it, you know, it was like the classic moving pictures and and I just fell in love. And then I was just like obsessed with them. And I still am like, they're incredible. Like they, anything I do in some way, Rush, especially Getty Lee, like has influenced me. Um, Very cool. But then, you know, kind of on, from the prog end of things into the metal, like, you know, the big metal bands that kind of got me into the stuff, like Opeth, like, you know, the good old, the era of Opeth, you know, from like Miami's Rehearse to like Ghost uh, Reveries, like that era just like was I, such a massive influence on me. Um, and Meshuggah as well, like kind of those two were the first kind of big, like, you know, and like, I think they're, you know, definitely jumping points from like the prog into the, the yeah, metal, yeah. the death metal, but they were like massive influence. and. Um, you know, 
from there, like, you know, like lots of things that kind of led us to, I think, where we are now. But if I had to think of like the foundational kind of bands that got me into like, I guess, the stuff that I listen to now, um, it would really be them. And then, you know, if I had to like go from there, like bands like a lot of the Montreal metal scene, like Augury and Martyr, um, you know, Gore, of course, Gore Guts, yeah. like they kind of were big influence on me to be like, oh, wow, like it can still be technical, but like extremely heavy, like heavier than I thought that I would ever be cool with. Um, <laughs> you know, and then like from there, it's, yeah, like that was the really the big launch pad. Awesome. That's very cool. You said Meshuggah because the first three Meshuggah records kind of blew my mind. I'm kind of in the same kind of way. Like I heard it and I'm like, I'm like, what, what, what is this? This is like jazz metal prog all kind of rolled in the one and whoa, it's got death metal elements too. Like what, what the hell is going on? No, that's, that's very, yeah. and you can, I know you probably don't hear it, but you can hear a lot of the, the, the Gorguts and the Meshuggah in your music just because of the, the, the kind of time changes that you have, like it, 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 it's that choppy time change that works really well with the atmospheres that you do. So sweet. That's yeah. man. That's I, I'm happy to hear that. Like, uh, <laughs> you know, it's, you know, they definitely, like I said, like, yeah, the, the influences are there. So I'm glad that like they're, they're there. You can hear them, but they're not like, you know, extremely obvious. Or anything. Yeah, it's not, it, it's, it's all, it's all part of like the, the palette. You can definitely, you can definitely hear it. That's um, awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I just have a couple more questions and then I'll let you guys have your night back. Uh, I appreciate you doing this very much again. Yeah, thanks, Ralph. Uh, we appreciate this as well. This is fantastic. Like, no, awesome. Uh, so do you guys work on other music right now outside of, uh, of Gut Void or is Gut Void just the, the, the focus period right now? I'd say it's the main focus, but we, we have other projects because we're always writing. So it's hard just to have one, but Gut Boys are our main, I guess our main, uh, our main baby. And uh, I have two drastically things. different. Uh, I would say yeah, to some extent. Yeah, I have um, a grindcore band or a project that's that I'd have, um, and a death metal kind of more, even more gore gut sounding. Gotcha. Yeah, so that one's called Fumes, and the grindcore one is called a Grotesque Mask. Nice. What about you, Brendan? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I've got um, kind of like two main, kind of similar to Dan, like two main solo projects. One's um, called Wexler's Prime, which is like my prog, like pure prog metal. Like it's basically Rush, Dream Theater mixed with Martyr and like Gorguts, I guess you could say. Like those are kind of the, the main mashings. So, which it's pretty vastly different. Like I, like 80% of the vocals are like clean, very much like Getty Lee style stuff. Nice. With yes. Death metal. Um, and then I have another project called uh, Simulacra, which is basically my ode to Meshuggah. Like it was, <laughs> well, I, I'm a lefty, so it's really hard to find, you know, good guitars without like, you know, paying a lot. And I happened to find an eight string lefty on Kijiji. Nice. Um, and I got it. Actually, Dan, like I, I wasn't in the city and Dan had to pick it up for me. And then when I got that, I'm like, oh, I can finally like show my appreciation of Meshuggah, like, because I couldn't before, so I didn't have this. So I wrote an album basically in the style of like Meshuggah, but like so, some of them said it's like Meshuggah meets cavernous old school death metal, which I thought is great. Like it kind of like it makes sense. Um, so yeah, those are the the two on my end. Um, and then you know, there's a project Dan and I have been working on for a very, very long time, which is slowly coming. So we're hoping, I don't know, it's in the next like five years it'll be put out. So <laughs> keep your ears open for that. We don't have a name for it yet, but it's gotcha. uh, There's another one too that might uh, come to fruition one day uh, from an older band. That we... <laughs> if there's oh, time, yeah. there's time, we'll, we'll, we want to do something with it as well. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so like, like as Dan said, we're always writing, whether it's Gut Void or other stuff. So we've, we've got... We've got a bunch of things cooking. <laughs> Very cool. Um, yeah. So yeah, so we'll, we'll keep our ears out for any new stuff that uh, is not gut void esque. So I, I appreciate that. Um, so I'm gonna kind of leave it here as the final question for you guys, or actually the, your your statement or whatever you want to say. Uh, kind of talk about the band, what's upcoming. Uh, tell us how we can get your get your music and uh, and anything you want to kind of put right here. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, do you want to go there? You can start and I'll kind of hop in. All our music is on the, all the digital platforms, so it's, you can find on Spotify, Bandcamp, our own Bandcamp and Blood Harvest Bandcamp. Um, yeah, right now we're just working on the full length, trying to jam as much as you can, even though we're still in somewhat of a lockdown. Um, and yeah, we're always writing. Yeah. Lots of stuff. Yeah, like we like we mentioned, like we have basically the full length written. We have some other stuff that didn't make the cut for the full length, but we want to put out kind of after the full length. So we, you know, we have plenty of stuff kind of gut void wise that's that's in the books as well, uh, writing wise. And yeah, I think if you want our physical stuff, like we have a CD and the cassette out um, it's on Blood Harvest. So if you hop on the Blood Harvest band camp, you can get it there or their website. Um, and yeah, like that's, that's kind of, I think Dan covered everything else for that. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. And then hopefully, hopefully some, some videos coming up soon, you know? <laughs> There you go. Sell the merch. Sell the merch. Absolutely. <laughs> good. Good call. Good call. No. Um. Yeah. And guys, if you ever come to the U.S., please let me know because I definitely want to see you live. We'll hang out. We'll have a beer and kind of chill out. It'll be super cool to be able to do. Uh, okay. And now, yeah. I, now that I know we can talk geeky prog music, we'll do it for hours, man. That's that's freaking awesome. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, absolutely. Other than that, thank you so very much, man. Uh, Clint from the doorway too. Uh, guys from gut void uh it's been an absolute goddamn pleasure uh i will make sure that i put links to your band camp uh to the blood blood harvest site uh and to your facebook page so all the fine folks can find your stuff as well and uh stay in touch man it's been a blast yeah thanks a lot yeah thank you so much really 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 appreciate this